I'm Sean Bose, concert visual designer in Los Angeles, California. Today, I'm going to share with you a few tips on how you can get your first VJ gigs and break into the industry. These tips come from my own experience as well as the experiences of other professional VJs that I know and some of which I have interviewed on this channel. All right, tip number one, make friends with a VJ. So many VJ origin stories start with making a friend in the industry, someone who can show you the basics, show you the path to success, and help open those first few doors. Let's see this in action. Um, there was not many people to talk to. There, It was so hard to find information about what to do, but I met a couple of VJs in the industry at the time, and... They just kind of guided me and just through there met more people and it just grew and grew. My friend Whoop, Whoopi, I don't know how I met Whoopi, but um, he was working with V Squared and at, also at the nightclub called Create Nightclub. Right now it's called Academy, but it used to be called a Create in Hollywood. And he was going to do some other festival and they needed a VJ and everyone's busy. So I got to go up there and I just tried my hardest and everyone, everyone enjoyed working with me. So I eventually became the backup VJ for whenever Whoopi was gone. I would drive up um, on the weekends from San Diego on Friday after my graphic design job. I'd sit through traffic to get there Friday night. Uh, luckily, my dad was still living in L.A. at the time, so I could just stay at his house and then work two nights, then drive back down Sunday, go back to work. Um, so I did that for a long time. Then I became the resident there. And every weekend I was just driving back and forth San Diego to LA. Um, and that was when I really, really got to learn Resolume, how to VJ, learned all of my content, what works, what doesn't work, color matching, brightness, working with an LD, you know, the, all those nights in the club just really, really got me to where I am today, I think. And I went to a show in, I can't remember what the show even was. This was so long ago, but I went to a show and I met a VJ there. And I was kind of just running around the show trying to learn what everybody did. So um, I wanted to know what the tour manager did, what the lighting designer did, what, and, and had landed on this VJ who, um, was very enthusiastic in showing me Resolume and wanted to show me how visuals work. So the VJ that I met that initially got me excited into uh, learning how to do Resolume um, invited me to drive to Wisconsin, middle of nowhere, Wisconsin, to um, get some screen time for the first time. And what he did was basically like he had this little mixer he would be VJing and then he would wait to see on my, like we had another secondary display. Uh, we'd look at that, to, he would just look at that. And when he thought I was doing something cool, then he would switch it to mine and, oh, and bring nice. it up. So he was like, you know, that was my first uh, like time VJing. And um, I was really grateful that he like kind of led me along the way in that way. Um, and then that kind of led into like my first time getting to learn how to put a show together because um, I, I went to programming for um, a show that he was putting together. And we did a really similar thing when in the first couple of shows where I would make content or I had certain songs that I would I would do visuals for and he would flip it to me during the the set during that time and then flip it back to him and do some of the other songs and then flip it back to me so that was kind of how I started to learn how to um VJ and about timing of the show and um about um yeah like lighting calls and things like that but one day uh imminent surprisingly followed me on Instagram and I saw what they did. And I was like, oh, shit, this is fucking dope. So I straight up slid into their DMs, asked them if they were looking for an intern. I think I still have the message in my history. Uh, <laughs> and so they gave me the internship, got to meet Drew, was interning with them for about a year, and then went on, graduated, and started working at Avalon Hollywood. So one day, Drew gave me a ring asking if I wanted a TM for 12 Planet. I was like shocked. I was like, hell yeah, man. I want to do it. And it's like, cool. He also is going to start. We were in the process of creating this like time-coded audio visual experience for 12 Planet Now. But yeah, no, that was sort of the gateway into 
what I'm doing now for Imminent and for Drew. Just that's sort of how it all kind of started. So as you can see, making friends with a VJ is a great way to break into the industry. You can do it in person or even online. Start genuine conversations, demonstrate curiosity and interest, and your new VJ friend might be your ticket to your first gig. Tip number two, do it for free. This is a controversial one, but when you don't have a portfolio to demonstrate your skills, it's difficult to convince somebody to pay you to do the task. So you need to find another way. A lot of VJs got their start by offering to do the gig for free or being a secondary installation as part of an event. Let's listen to a few stories of how people have used this technique to get their foot in the door. My first show, I mean, I begged the promoter to let me show up with a projector that I put. I was not doing the visuals for the show. I was literally doing visuals on a wall in the back of the venue. I just wanted to be there and just do my visuals. And the promoter was really cool. He was like, yes, do your thing. We love creativity. Like flow artists are doing their things. I was doing my thing. And then I met a lot of people that way too. It was a good way to get my foot in the door. Uh, so that was one of my first shows. Uh, yeah, so that was my intro to the more underground scene in Chicago. Uh, and it worked out because the next time uh, they had a show, the VJ couldn't make it. So I was the first person that they called. So that worked out pretty well. Uh, and I talked to people to too. I would talk to the VJs after shows. Mm -hmm. I would like go up to them and be like, I want to do what you do. And then ask them how they got involved. And then I would stay in contact with them. Um, and they sort of helped me through setting up my resolution for shows, things like that. So that was really nice. Both, I remember my first, the first time I ever played for anyone was, it was a Beyond Wonderland after party at this hotel. And the promoter had hired, already hired and was paying a different VJ. But he said, oh, you could just set up your projector in the corner and just do whatever you want. So what I had done is I cut up the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland into all these little clips. And I got some other like 3D looking, videos and mix the two and so I just set up my projector on the back corner of the wall and by the end of the night I just had a whole group of people just sitting in front of my projector watching and nobody was paying attention to the stage and it was just wow. yeah <laughs> that was the first time I ever played for anyone so offering your services for free can be an effective way of breaking into the industry this takes the pressure off the promoter while giving you an opportunity to demonstrate your skills and document it for your portfolio. Now, obviously you don't wanna do this too many times and you should start charging as soon as you can, but offering your art for free for the first time might be your ticket to landing your first gig. Tip number three, fake it till you make it. Tenacity and the ability to think on your feet are essential for success in this field and it can also be what opens that first door for you. I've spoken to several VJs who have told me that their first opportunity came from saying yes to an opportunity that they weren't quite ready for, but their tenacity and resourcefulness helped them nail it anyway. Let's hear a few examples. I was making flyers for a lot of the club events there. Uh, the guy I worked for ended up leaving, but then the rest of the club sort of liked me and then decided, uh, you know, hey, why don't you just work here for us? Uh, at that time, the club was called Qtopia, and um, the event manager at this club was Pasquale Rotella from Insomniac, um, who, you know, founded EDC and, you know, Base Rush and all these mega brands that, you know, we're definitely part of. But back then he was working the club. And so the club that we were at was an 18 and up club. They sold Gatorade and it was um, just a rave club. But they won a lottery to reopen with a liquor license. So they closed everything down and uh, got a whole new video system, lighting system in that club. And me being the graphic designer at the club, I kind of was poking around with the video gear and was like, who's using this stuff? And everyone's like, 
no one knows how this thing works. So <laughs> I ended up uh, learning how to VJ because I worked at the club and this is probably about 2005, um, started making some of my own VJ clips. I just kind of became the VJ at the club and did it until I kind of found my place in motion graphics and, you know, left the club to kind of do, you know, a bit more commercial work. This one venue called Rum Jungle in Orlando it was like, we'd never really done anything that big, I guess. And the venue had like an LED wall, full PA, and no one knew how to use it. Mm-hmm. And Faye Craze was playing and, and they were headlining it. And this was in 2017, 2018. And I was like, well, I could probably figure it out. So I went and grabbed my MacBook out of my car and like Googled how to do it. And like ran the show on the demo, like resolute watermark up and down the corners and just like strove in my life away. I was like, hey, this is sick. You know, keyboard warrior over here. And then and then from there, I just like a couple months later, I started working at one of the nightclubs there and then was on tour in like five months. And then just learned from that, from there. Like I went on the Bear Grylls Freak Show tour, just like halfway through their tour, they came through Florida and were like, you want to just like come on the bus? And I was like, sure. <laughs> just went out and, and just helped and helped Justin, their, their tech that was VJing at the time. We let him kind of just build a wall and then I just kind of VJed. And, and then I just learned from there and then just kind of took off, I guess. <laughs> so prepare as much as you can so you can be ready for any opportunity that comes your way, even if you feel it's a little beyond your ability. This could be the ticket to your first gig, and if you push yourself and succeed, it could be the ticket to many more. My own story is a combination of these three tips. I had been practicing on my own for a few years and started chatting up VJs at some local events that I attended. They let me know about a VJ competition that was coming up as part of a local festival. So I decided to enter. This was my first time VJing in public and a bunch of the local Boston area VJs were going to be there. So I practiced like crazy in the weeks leading up to the event. I ended up winning that competition. So later that week when one of the local vjs needed a replacement for one of their gigs they thought of me i said yes of course even though that would be my first real gig and i was nervous uh, but i did pretty well and ended up getting hired back as a regular vj at that venue and getting more gigs around the city over the years to come All right, so now you know a few tips for how you can get your first gig. If you've already got your first gig or you use one of these tips, let us know in the comments how you did it. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and come back later for more videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.